Hey, 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 how's it going? Julie Burke here, The Freedom Designer, and I'm excited for a Top Tip Tuesday uh, coming to you live from my home office here in Chicago. Where else would I be during quarantine? So I'm going to give it a minute. I'm I'm like kind of wired because I was interviewed this morning for a podcast, and um, I'm going to be writing a chapter in a book, Jordan Adler's book. Um, it all falls under this umbrella called Momentum Makers, and the podcast this morning was off the charts. I talked about um, I talked about the importance of personal branding, and he asked me some really, really awesome questions. So I can't wait to share with all of you guys when that podcast um, becomes live. So in the interim, I am going to share with you guys today seven steps to leveraging the power of social selling. I know a lot of people kind of cringe when they hear the word sales and when it comes to selling, but yet you have to understand how it works um, because social selling is not really just about sales. Um, so I, I want to help, um, I want to help you and give you like some of these steps. So you understand, um, what you could do to go out there and really leverage social media to, um, you know, sway it in your favor. Okay. I see a lot of people getting lost on social. Let me know if that's you. Um, and as you're popping in, can you please say hello? Because I know there's quite a, a, a lag and I want to make sure that I say hello to everybody. Let me just make sure I am live. Give me a second. Okay. Um, I'm good. Wait. I'm good and I'm good. Okay. So let me know if you'd like to make more connections and more sales and have more leads in your business. I want to, to drop me a flame emoji right now. I can't see any comments. I don't know if there's comments, but okay, there we go. Hey, Debbie, how are you, honey? Hi. Is that, um, Leela? Leela, I hope I'm saying that right. And Debbie, you're watching from the UK. So if you want more leads and sales, drop me a flame emoji. And if you use social, um, media to grow your brand presence, um, and you might not even, you might even be in the beginning of stages of like building a brand. And, and that's cool. If you're in the beginning stages, just put beginning. If you are using your brand on social, um, put social in the comments so I could see it. What's up, Anita? How are you, honey? Hey, Lori, how are you? Good morning. Good, good early morning. So I'm going to like really just dive in, keep this straight, sweet to the point. You guys, I'm doing intermittent fasting and I'm supposed to eat at 11 o'clock and I'm getting very hangry and you do not want to hang with Julie Burke when she is hangry. Just ask my husband. And normally I am not hangry, <laughs> but I think because I've been so active this morning doing that interview, that podcast, and now this, um, and I have the boys upstairs, hopefully shh, they're being quiet. They're being good. But so I'm just going to dive in because, um, that's how I roll. So first off, I want you to understand that using social media, the goal is to find potential customers, relate to their needs and engage with them. Okay. So social selling is, it's really the art of using social networks to find, connect with, understand, um, and nurture the sales process and your audience, right? So the goal in social selling is really about forming the relationship um, with each pro prospect, providing suge suggestions, um, adding value, answering questions. Okay, so that's really what social selling is. And I think because it has the word selling, that that is the that is the the like the the part where people like kind of tune out or maybe kind of cringe about it, but it's, it's selling an aspect of you're really kind of selling yourself more than selling your products. And this goes, everything kind of goes back to 
brand building. Okay. So if you are in a position to take notes, I'm going to just kind of quickly go through these seven steps. I'm going to keep it more high level and I'm going to share with you a way that you'll be able to go deeper with it. So um, step number one is build a professional online presence. Okay. So um, buyers nowadays are very selective. I mean, you have this whole online world and it's, people are getting lost. It's confusing. There's a lot of people out there trying to grab the attention. It's not what it was when I first came into the online scene back in 2015, when I was growing, you know, starting to kind of branch out for my network marketing business. I wanted to, um, you know, kind of create my own identity. I felt like my identity became my network marketing company. And so I, I really am like, I'm, I'm, I'm Julie Burke, like network marketing is just an entity of Julie Burke. Um, but there's all these different facets to me. And it's funny because through the last couple of years of building my online brand, I feel like I'm kind of like at that position now where I I'm shifting my brand again, not from Julie Burke, the business network marketing aspect um, expert, but into Julie Burke, the lifestyle entrepreneur. Okay. So your, your, your brand will always shift and develop, but the whole point of it is to build that professional online brand. Um, and it's not a one shot deal. Okay. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to build a solid presence. And it's like this ongoing endeavor and your brand will, will shift, right? Like I was create success with Julie. If you follow me from years ago and now I'm the freedom designer, like I completely ditched that whole brand I built up and it was really, really scary. But I feel like now in my new direction, being more of a lifestyle entrepreneur, you know, freedom to me is like feeling free from all the shit that has held you back, you know? And being free is the designing the lifestyle that you want first and then the business that goes along with it. Being free, I mean, you can attach your own um, your own meaning to freedom. But for me, it's about designing whatever it is that you want that's going to offer you that freedom. Okay, that's what that's why I shifted to the freedom designer. It has a different brand essence to it. So what you want to remember is that, you know, when you build this tribe and loyalty and trust with your audience, they will follow you no matter what. So another just little tip is keep your profiles up to date, keep them relevant, stay in touch with your contacts um, and build and maintain your network and just keep working on your branding um, on a regular basis and be consistent. Consistency is so key. Okay, that's tip number one. If you guys are with me, can somebody put build a professional online presence as step number one? Step number two, okay, know your audience. Know your audience. You have to understand how to develop content. And the only way you're going to know how to develop content, which is the glue, is to understand your audience. So who are they? What is going on in their mind? Um, what is their issues, right? You'll hear a lot of people talk about like, what's their pain? Like just what's their issue? What's coming up for them? What's keeping them up? Um, where are they on their journey? Um, where are they hanging out on social? Okay. Um, so it's easy to understand how to develop your, your content when you know your audience is super, super important to, um, know and understand. Okay. So that's step two. Step three is engage with your audience. So you want to position yourself as the subject matter expert. So let me give you an example. When I was coming online, um, <clears throat> it was, like I said, 2016, I started my fan page and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to create content of, um, around network marketing because I was having success in network marketing and I wanted to position myself as an expert there. And, and I get this too. Well, Julie, like I haven't had, I understand the importance of branding, but I haven't had 
um, you know, the, the, the six figures business or seven figure business to be an expert. You don't listen to me. You don't have to be like, that's the thing. I will tell you right now, like I had to dumb a lot of things down. I had a really, I was sharing my story in a way of like, oh, I was this successful network marketer making six figures. And ultimately I wasn't sharing the backstory of how I went from unemployment making $600 a month to making six figures. So I had to, I had to like dial it back because then I felt like people looked at me like, well, of course you're the expert because you've had a lot of success, but no, no, no. Like we're, what happened from point A to point B? What happened, happened from unemployment to then getting to the six figures, right? Like there was this whole journey there. So I share that with you because this is the side of you that you have to humanize when you're out there and you're engaging with your audience and giving them not just the highs, but the lows and taking them on the roller coaster ride with you, which I've done through my whole entrepreneur journey. Um, you know, I always say 2016 was my breakout. My 2017 was my breakthrough and 2018 was my breakdown um, because I literally hustled my ass off for like two years straight and was living in this office for 10 hours a day, you know, almost seven days a week. And I like completely, I, I was like, I totally hit burnout. That's a, that's a, that's a story. And that's something that a lot of people can resonate with. Um, and it took a lot of courage for me to stop everything I was doing to, to step back and cut my income in half and stop coaching, like stop doing all this stuff to really put the, the finger on the pulse of what, where I needed to be, what I needed to do to get back to me, number one, because I was sacrificing everything. I hit adrenal fatigue. I stopped working out. I was doing all the, the things. I was doing a lot of busy work, right? But like I had like all of 2019 was really spent on reflection. So I, you know, again, I share that with you because I'm like, you know, I take people on that journey with me. I was quiet for a little bit there, but, you know, now I'm very vocal about it. And um, so you have to understand like what pieces of your story um, that you can bring forth. And again, if you haven't had like all the glitz and the glory you don't need to because you could take people on a journey with you as you grow yourself, as you grow your business, as you grow on your health journey, whatever it looks like for you. OK, so um, you don't even though you don't feel like an expert, just because you take people on a journey, you'll be perceived as the expert because you'll be giving valuable tips. Does that make sense? So, again, I know that was a little bit longer, but I wanted to give you like backstory. So three was engaged with your audience. Um, number four, one second. Okay, um, listening and identifying with leads. So um, it's funny how a lot of people come to social media and they come to social media and they just think about themselves. And if that's you, I want you to give me like a hands up emoji because social media is not about you necessarily. Now it, that might sound counterintuitive, but listen, um, this is where people get like lost in the scroll. So you come on and you do your post. Okay. Now you don't just want to do a post. You want to start posting with intention. And you want to start telling people a story and you want to have some sort of call to action. Like there's all these elements of actually posting that people don't realize. Again, if you want to improve your social selling game. Now, the flip side of that is there is incredible, valuable information on your ideal prospects social media channel. And they're basically telling you exactly what they want and what they need. All you have to do is pay attention. But yet so often 
again, we come on, we're scrolling, we're just putting up a post because, you know, dang, I got to get a post out. I'm supposed to post one, two times a day. If you're really active three times a day on, you know, Facebook, it's like five times a week, I think on Instagram. But, you know, the, the thing is like, you're missing the boat in terms of like coming in as like an investigator almost to see like what they're talking about, what they need, um, what their hobbies are, or like what, like where you can find that common ground with them. Okay. Um, monitor what people are saying, look at like what company they're with, what industry they're with, look at their family life, look at what their hobbies are. Right. Um, and there's tools and stuff out there that you can use, but I'm not going to dive into that right now. I talk about that more, um, which I'll be talking about at the end, but I just created a new, um, mini course. It's actually not mini cause it's really robust. When I say mini, I'm going to say it, it's mini because it's really, 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 really affordable. <laughs> um, but it's called social selling superstar. And I'll go over that a little bit more later, but it's, um, really identifying, like I said, with your leads and listening more to them. So you understand how to position your content. Okay. Now tip number five. So let me know, actually, if you guys are still with me, if this is helping, like, is any of this, if you're finding value, just put value in the comments, just let me know. Okay. Now tip number five, five, it's always like weird is opposite five is be genuine and authentic. Okay. So once you've identified with the people in your network that you're looking to attract, begin to engage with them, find that, like I said, that common ground, use it at, as an entry point in dialogue, grow the connection, grow the friendship. This is not about slamming products down their throat. You know, we all know when friend requests are sent that that person's going to immediately go to your profile. So I always put like when I know I'm about to send some friend requests, I'm, I, that day I put out like a really, um, good engaging quality post. Super important because they're going to be going to your stories. They're going to be coming to your profile and they want, and that's why your profile should always be relevant up to date. Like there's a whole way you can set up your profile to be a billboard in a funnel for you. I go over that as well inside of social media or social selling superstar um, of how to set up your profile, but just be you and be all of you. Please, like people say to me, you're so genuine, you're so authentic. I don't know how <laughs> else to be. Loa, guys, stop running, I'm on a live. Now, gotta crack that. <laughs> Lola, no. Come here. Um, sorry, boys running down the stairs. Now the dog's barking. This is what happens. Okay, let's go into six real quick because I know they're getting hungry and I'm getting hungry. <laughs> okay. Um, you can also leverage your existing contacts. So what I mean by that is before reaching out to any of the leads that you might identify with, you want to check their following and follower lists. Okay. So most likely you're going to have some mutual friends in common. Um, and they could be that mutual connection. Now you can also ask your, if you're going to reach out to them, you can also ask your, your shared mutual friend a little bit about them and also ask that mutual friend if they can maybe do an introduction, um, because then you can borrow their trust having them as a mutual friend. That's just a little, that, that's like actually a huge, huge, huge insider social selling tip. Because again, um, you might see something that this potential prospect wrote and you know you can help them, but yet you're coming out of left field. They don't really know who you are. And yet there's this mutual friend and you could go to the mutual friend and say to the mutual friend, listen, I, I know I can help them, but maybe if you could just let them know you saw their posts as well, and then introduce me as a person that can help them, how much more likely is that potential prospect going to be to listen to you when they were introduced to you through a mutual friend? 
Okay. I don't know if a light bulb just went off for you, but I know that that right there is, it's a super effective strategy. Okay. And when it comes to social selling and then number uh, tip number seven is um, provide value. So rather than just simply talking about your products or services, your goal is to always educate and provide value. Um, and this is going to help establish you as an expert in your field. So write posts that either share um, knowledge around something. So, you know, for me, I'm with a health and wellness network marketing company. It's just one aspect to what I do. I have several businesses, but I'm into health and wellness and fitness. I mean, I'm going to be 43 on Saturday and I want to take care of myself and it has nothing to do with vanity. It has to do more with me just wanting to feel good and, and confident and, and show my boys to be, to have them grow up, to be healthy and strong. And I just overall feel better, right? Taking care of myself. So a couple of weeks ago, I started this intermittent fasting and I, I've done it like on and off, but like I have been sticking to it religiously for two weeks now and taking before and afters and like just, you know, sharing the journey. So yesterday I did a picture of me and my workout clothes. Now I wrote about it because I'm going to be 43 and I'm very proud of that. And I feel like people make excuses when they get to maybe a certain age or whatever, like excuses can fly all over the place. Like, do I feel like working out all the time? No, like I have my boys home, but you know what? I make it a priority. And so it was an encouraging post. And then also in there, I gave tips of what I was doing. Well, one of the tips was um, using one of my products. Okay. I didn't say the product name. I created curiosity. And then at the very end, like the call to action was, hey, if you want to learn more about number four, just drop me a flame emoji and I'll make sure to get you the information. And I had like, I don't know, I had like six or seven people drop the flame emoji. So that's what I'm talking about, right? It's just, it's not just saying here, you know, buy my liquid gold because it will help melt fat. It was saying, it was sharing the story. It was talking about how I'm going to be 43. And this is, and it was, it was also giving other tips as well. I wasn't just talking about the product. The main focus focus was all around like the intermittent fasting. That was like the most important piece, right? Because that's something I've been following to a T and proud of it that I have not, um, I have not like thrown in the towel yet. And I feel really, really good. So, all right. So there you have it. Those are just seven quick tips to social selling. Like I said, I have my social selling superstar, um, mini course. It's the video training. There's like six bonuses. Um, there's scripts, there's templates. There's a lot in this, um, program. So if you want to get on the wait list, just put list in the comments and I can send you the link to get on the wait list for a special price. Okay. I hope you found value in this. Social selling is huge. It's not going anywhere. You want to understand not just this, but you do want to understand the sales process and then how to close. And I go over that as well inside of the course. So no need to worry about that. Um, if you have any questions for me, if you do it at 43, your 53 year old self will thank you. Exactly. 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 So I want to age gracefully, no doubt. Amanda, great tip about trusted friends. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, if you feel like you have something and you see that they're posting about something that you're like, oh my God, like what I have is perfect for them. Going to the that mutual friend and just saying, hey, can you do like a quick introduction and I'll take it from there? Yeah. So, so important. Now go and eat. Yes, Anita, I'm going now because my stomach is grumbling. So I'm going to cut it there. Thanks everyone for hanging and I'll be seeing you um, on the next Top Tip Tuesday. Actually, Top Tip Tuesday next week, I have a guest expert. Um, we'll be posting about her. She's all about um, 
creating balance as a busy mom and having the children home and like, how do you run a business from your household? How do you create that balance? How do you balance? How do you be more productive? Um, she's a really great coach and entrepreneur. And, um, so I'm excited for you guys to meet her and she has, um, well, I'm not going to give it away. Anyways, you guys will be meeting her next Tuesday. All right. Take care. Have a good week and I'll see you soon. Bye.